Shields up, Iron Breakers. Rook on here coming at you with another video, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Lance Guide. Now, the Lance is the weapon that you want to pick if you just want to be the ultimate tanking machine when it comes to Monster Hunter. This is a weapon that allows you to just be all up in the monster's face and tell it, go ahead, give it your best shot. And then when the monster does give it its best shot, you're going to be able to block it and counter it and go to work on this monster. You get to pick, okay, do I feel like breaking your face? The weapon gives you the tools to break its face. Do I feel like breaking your legs? You get the tools to break its legs. Do I feel like chopping your tail? You get the tools to chop the tail. This is a pinpoint precision weapon, and that is one of my favorite things about the Lance. Now, the Rise does add a couple of layers of complexity to it with some of its new moves, which make it more interesting for people that have been playing Lance for a long uh, amount of time at least that's the way that I feel about it uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit further in the video because as per usual we're gonna be starting with the very basic notions of the weapon and the default switch skills enabled in case you guys have messed around with the switch skills of the Lance let me tell you guys what the default ones are they are anchor rage guard dash and guard okay these are your default switch skills so make sure you have those if you want to follow along this particular tutorial so now let's get to the basics and with the basics i always like starting with the three button inputs you have your x attack you have your a attack and you have your zr which is your block and you guys might be going like well there's not that much difference between the x attack and the a attack they seem pretty similar that's because they are they're just basically two different kinds of pokes now the main difference between them is that if you do an x attack Actually, we missed there, but if we were to hit the head right there, that is 68 damage for the X attack. 51 is more the damage that you're looking for. The reason it's doing 68 is because we have friggin' um, Brutal Strike enabled in this weapon, so every now and then you get some crazy hits. But uh, yeah, the one thing that you want to keep in mind is that the A attack deals more damage. The X attack deals a little bit less damage. And the other thing that you want to keep in mind when it comes to the lance is the rule of threes. Most things in the lance work in threes. So, for instance, for your X attack, you get three attacks. One, two, three, then it stops. One, two, three, and it stops. Same thing for your A attack. One, two, three, and it stops. One, two, three, and it stops. So this is kind of like your rhythm when it comes to doing things with the gun lance. You go up to the monster, one, two two three and then you do something else like right there we opted for a dodge and let's talk about dodging because dodging is extremely important with just about every weapon one of the things that i've tried reinforcing throughout these guides is that you really want to dodge whenever you finish your combo because that cancels out recovery animations to give you an example of this with the lance i'm going to do a three attack combo and after that I'm gonna immediately start trying to move forward so that you guys can see the delay so I'm moving forward one two three still pressing forward and only now I'm moving okay watch that again one two three wait 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 and only now we're moving look at the amount of recovery time on that if instead of doing that you go one two three dodge cancel the recovery animation and you're already on your way to your next attack so you can use dodge to link up between different combos so you go one two three dodge one two three dodge one two three dodge one two three that's one way to go about it but that is the rule of threes very much like your attacks your dodges also come in threes so after any attack that you do you can dodge in a different direction like i've showed you for most of the weapons that we've done tutorials for so far so i can go x and dodge right but the rule of threes apply so that means we can go attack and then one two three dodges and then it stops okay look again one two three dodges and then it stops and while we're on the topic of dodging very much like the gun lance the lance has a long back hop if you press back and dodge so for instance here are your regular back hops one two three and back hops you can pretty much do them almost infinitely like one two three this is like a regular back hop so now let's see what does a long back hop look like whoa it's like you're flying so you can use these to approach monsters, as you guys can see. 
Uh, this is with the Vade Extender 3, by the way, so do keep that in mind. The hops on the Lance in Monster Hunter Rise, in my opinion, are really, really tiny. I mean, Lance already has kind of like tiny hops, but uh, in Rise, it's even worse. And you do have mobility tools to, to get around that. But for now, just be aware that you can hop, and then there's the long back hop, and you can do the long back hop after any action that you do. So, like, you can be attacking, and then after an attack, you can do back plus B, and you get long back hop. Very, very good to dodge stuff. If you want to approach a monster, also remember you can just, like, turn your back to it, hop once, and then big back hop if you point it towards the monster and press B. So be aware of that. This is like your bread and butter when it comes to mobility. Be aware of like dodging sideways and doing stuff like that because you're going to be going poke, 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 dodge, poke, 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 dodge, and so on and so forth. Now, another thing that you have is the guard dash. This is one of your main mobility tools. And, I, and this one is one of those things that I personally have barely mastered when it comes to the gun lance. The, the first time that I've seen this being used, I was like, oh, wow, that's, uh, that's actually pretty sick. So what you do is you hold the block button and then you press forward and X and your character does this. Now, when you do this, you're basically blocking while you are advancing. So if a monster attacks you while you're doing this and you have enough guard, you're not even going to feel it and you're going to be advancing towards the monster. The guys are like, "Well, that's not particularly impressive." Yeah, but it's a very good mobility tool because you can do it in any direction. So like you can be poking a monster in the face, right? Suddenly the monster moves left, doesn't attack, does something. You can actually do this towards the right. So all you got to do is press the block button X and right on the analog stick and it goes whoop guard dash to the right and you can do the same thing to the left whoop guard dash to the left you can do the same thing to the back whoop guard dash backwards and there we even did a shield attack because i spammed dex a little bit too much but see the advantage of this guard dash is that it's got two follow-up attacks that you can do one of the follow-up attacks is if you follow it up by pressing x you're going to shield bash your target boom and that's some ko damage right there which can allow you to ko monsters if that's what you want to do the other one is a poking attack if you press A. So you do the guard dash forward, and then A, leaping thrust, and it does three attacks. Now, the lance, in my opinion, is a very good weapon when it comes to elemental damage. Right now, I'm using a raw damage lance because I'm lazy and I didn't feel like crafting one lance of each element because I... You know, I'm going to need to craft a lot of weapons to do these tutorials, and I'm going to have to save my materials for crafting multiple types of weapons, so I went for a raw option when it came to damage with the lance. But, you know, be aware of this because mobility is going to be a key aspect of you playing the lance, okay? Because, as you can see, we don't hop very far, even with the Vade Extender. I mean, a Vade Extender does give it quite a bit of, uh, you know, life improvement, but still... Getting access to the monster with this big lumbering weapon can sometimes be a little bit challenging. So do practice your mobility, all of it, right? You know, dodging, guard dashing. You can even use guard dash and leaping thrust to just like position yourself a little bit closer to the monster. But there are other options for mobility, which we'll talk about as we move forward. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is your counter. Now, the Lance has a very basic counter, which is accessed by pressing block and A. If you just do block and A, it will cancel it instantly, but you can hold, it, you can hold the block after doing, the, blo after doing the, the counter, and it will last a little bit longer. Now, if a monster hits you while you do this, you're going to counter the monster instantly with an attack. And the important thing is that this can also be used to reset your combo. So in case you don't want to dodge, like I told you earlier, you can go and you can combo on a monster like one, two, three, dodge, one, two, three. Instead of that, you can go one, two, three, counter, one, two, three, counter, one, two, three, counter. And this keeps you kind of like on the offensive, and a lot of times you will just block uh, attacks from monsters automatically by just doing this. But do keep in mind, you don't want to just be spamming it like this, right? You don't want to be just going up to the monsters, spam, 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 spam. You want to be a little bit more deliberate, like you want to be poking and paying attention to the monster, and then you poke some more, and then you see when you're supposed to be countering, or if you have to dodge, you know, be a little bit more deliberate about the hits that you're doing 
game. Don't just go like, oh, I'm just going to go spam, poke, 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 counter, poke, 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 counter. Because that's what I do, and that's the wrong way to play the weapon, okay? <laughs> no, but seriously, a lot of people have a tendency to do that, and then you get stomped. Because this is a precision weapon, so you always have to pay attention to what the monster is doing before you continue your pokes. Now, having said that, there is a new thing that you can do with, um, with the Lance. I mean, it's not necessarily a new thing. You could do this in uh, Monster Hunter World and I think in previous Monster Hunters as well, which was the Wide Sweep. Now, the Wide Sweep was X plus A, and your character does this. Now, this kind of breaks up your combo a little bit. It's, um, it's going to take some getting used to if you're someone that's been used to the triple poke combo of the, of the Lance. This is going to be something that is going to be hard for you to get used to because you can now do this amidst your combo and you can actually charge it for additional damage. And it deals a respectable amount of damage. So if you hold down on X and A, look at that, 200 damage, okay? 200 damage, I think, is the equivalent of your three pokes, pretty much. Uh, yeah, the three pokes gave us about the, the 200 damage. You can usually get maybe a little bit more depending on whether or not you get crits, but as you can see there, you know, this poke, this uh, wide sweep is nothing to sneeze at. You can deal a significant amount of damage with it. And you can put it in the middle of your combo, but it has to obey the rule of threes. So you can go like one, two, wide sweep, and then counter. And one, two, wide sweep and then counter. Or you can even, if you're just starting up the combo, you can even go wide sweep, poke, wide sweep. And this is good, particularly if the monster is downed. Now, don't just assume that like, okay, so my new combo now is poke, poke, wide sweep. Because that's not the case at all. Because that's one of the advantages of the Lance, is that it's, it's extremely adaptable to the situation that you're in. You never want to be using the wide sweep unless you have a big enough opening to use it, okay? And you might be focusing on a specific thing, like maybe I want to poke at its arm over here, and I, for some reason, like, I need a claw part or something, and I need to break its arm. Then you want to just keep on poking and do your poking combos and just keep at it, right? But if you just want to dish out damage and you have a big enough opening, then you want to go for that, um, for that charged wide sweep. Now let's elaborate a little bit more on the counter. I told you guys about this counter. There is a way to transform this particular counter into a super guard, which can block just about everything. It basically transforms you into a wall. This is something that you want to use either because you messed up your counter, like say you messed up the counter and you see, oh no, the monster is going to hit me because I did my counter a little bit too soon and now I'm screwed. This is something that can save your ass if you're up against the ropes. And basically what you do is you press down and B and that gives you power guard. Okay, so basically you're attacking, you do your counter and after it, you press, um, you keep the block button pressed and you press back and B. And you go into your power guard. They actually call it power guard. I forgot if it was power guard or super guard, whatever. But basically, this thing will block everything, okay? You go like this, boom. Super defensive stance, boom, you'll block everything. Also, this allows you to instantly supercharge your counter. What does that mean? So, when you do a counter, if you hold it, that's 150 damage. On the other hand, if you just release it instantly, that's 99. So it's less damage. And it's probably even going to be less than 99, like I said. The damage on this particular lance is a little bit unstable because of Brutal Strike. But, you know, if you do it like this, it's pretty fast. If you keep it pressed, it eventually hits harder. Well, if you do the Super Guard and then do the attack, so some... wait... So something a little bit like, it'll be already with its maximum damage. So if for whatever reason you need to just like do the super hit faster, you can also do it like that. Even though that's not worth it because you got the wide sweep, right? But just be aware that that is an option that you have. And be aware that that power guard is one of those things, again, it's like, it's, it can be a correction tool, as well as it can be a tool that allows you to basically just 
you know, stop any big ol' attack that's coming at you. You're countering, back and B, power guard. So keep that in mind. Very, very, very important move. Now, the next move is the move that everybody loves, which is the choo-choo train. You basically hold down your block button, X plus A, and choo-choo! And the cool thing is that it starts going faster, right? Really, really fun move. Whee! And you can, you can chase down a monster with this, right? Because every single thing that you do is a hit. All the way up until your weapon bounces. If your weapon bounces, then you're screwed because it stops, see? Right there, how we bounced on the back and then it stopped. That's the one point that you got to keep in mind as you, as you play around with a dash attack. But this is also a tremendous mobility move, right? I mean, look at it. You can just like, way chase down a monster wherever it goes. Super satisfying, really fun. A lot of people really love it. So how can you exit it? You press A. And you get a finishing twin thrust. I don't know what the X even does. It's just a finishing thrust. Just a regular thrust. Actually, they both do the same thing. And it just depends on how long you've been charging the, um, the dash attack. So if you charge it long enough that you get that speed boost right there, then you're going to do a special finisher that deals more damage. So it's really good. If you just do it instantly... It's not going to deal as much damage, but you can also stop with a finishing thrust. So, keep that in mind. Dash attack, choo-choo train, really fun. Another thing that you can do with a dash attack is you can press B to jump. So, you, we used to use this attack a lot to mount in Monster Hunter World. Uh, so, you can use that here as well because it will also deal mounting damage. At least I think it deals mounting damage. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it doesn't anymore because of the way that Silk Mind works. But yeah, you can jump, you can poke, you can do all of those cool things. But now, the time has come to talk about Silk Mind Arts. Oh yeah, you can also change direction if you press B in a different direction. And you can also dodge like sideways. It's almost like playing one of those um, one of those mobile games where you're just like going left and right and dodging stuff that's on your way. Way, way, or you can go backwards if you want to. But yeah, that's how that works. Another thing that you can do with dash is you can finish it off with a charged wide sweep. So say for instance, uh, you go past the head of this monster while you're dashing. You can then press back and X plus A to do a wide sweep. Like that. Actually, it's just called a reverse attack. And you can't actually charge it apparently. I thought you'd be able to charge it. Okay. Bam. So, yeah, you can turn around, do all kinds of stuff with this, uh, practice it. Again, I, uh, I just like to reiterate, one of the most important things about the lance is its mobility. So remember, you got this guard dash, you got the, um, the actual dash attack, you have your dodges, you have your long back hops. So keep all of these tools in mind. Because otherwise, you're going to be one slow, lumbering dude heading up to the monster like this. Or you're going to be way too vulnerable, sheathing your weapon every single time that you need to actually attack a monster. Because it takes a good long while to sheath your weapon. By the way, also something that I'm not sure if it's new in Rise or not. But you can now, um, if you're doing a jumping attack, you can draw into dash attack by pressing the block button. Which is pretty cool. But yeah, that is your dash attack. Next up, we're going to be starting to touch on some Silk Bind moves. And the first Silk Bind move, I'm sorry to say, I don't like it at all. I was very, 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 very disappointed with this move. So for starters, it's going to use up two of your, um, of your wire bugs. Damn, my, my brain just had a massive fart there. It's going to use up two of your wire bugs. It's going to be ZL plus X. Twin Vine, and you're going to attach yourself to the monster. Now, this is going to draw the attention of the monster to yourself, even though the effects of that are not amazing, because I've, I've Twin Vine monsters a lot of times, and they just kept going about their business, not really instantly shifting their focus to me. So it's not like a taunt or anything like that. And then what this allows you to do is basically, at any point, you can press ZL and B, 
and you jump towards the monster. And when you're jumping towards the monster, you can choose different attacks that you can do. So you can jump towards the monster and do a jumping thrust. Or you can jump towards the monster and do a dash attack by holding the block button. Either option, to be honest, I don't really like. So, the Twin Vines for me, like, let me know, Lance Mains out there, how you guys feel about Twin Vines. I think the Wirebug cost of this ability is way too, too much for what it does. Like, sure, it's fun to be able to, you know, attach this to a mob and then be able to jump on top of the mob. But let's face it, the utility of that is very limited because it's not like the, the Lance has some really good aerial damage like the big damage that you have is this right it's your charged wide sweep or your your pokes and stuff so i don't know twin vine is one of those abilities that i'm not a huge fan but it does allow you to basically keep the chase going and it is fun to do like it's fun to do don't get me wrong but in terms of like an efficiency perspective i'm like eh, i don't know feels a little bit wonky and the thing is twin vines is the ability that you cannot change so you're kind of stuck with this one and um yeah in my opinion not my favorite ability i'm i'm sorry i wish we could swap this one out for another ability that would be uh more interesting but now let's talk about something much much better and that is anchor rage now anchor rage is zl plus a and it does this. And while your lance is glowing, you're going to deal additional damage. But it's a very short window. I wish that the Anchor Rage actually lasted longer. Because that would make this ability way better. Like, I still think it's an okay ability. But it has a massive downside. Like, it has a downside that is so big that I was incredibly disappointed to see because I had played Lance back in Monster Hunter World and I saw a similar problem with uh, this move, the your counter ability. Oops, sorry, I turned myself around at the end there. The, um, the basic counter. It had a problem, which was, um, you know, if the monster follows up with a second attack, you're basically screwed, right? Because, you know, you're, you're stuck in that animation of doing the poking thing. So what they did in World was they actually gave that move a little bit of super armor so that if you got caught afterwards, you would still take damage, but you wouldn't get knocked out on your feet. You know, you'd take some damage, but you'd be able to continue on your assault. And unfortunately, that is not what happens with the Anchor Rage. So like if a monster is doing a double attack, despite the fact that you landed this counter perfectly you're still going to get punished, which is very disheartening in my book. Like, I wish that they would give you just a little bit of hyper armor so that you'd be able to just eat that second attack and continue the onslaught after you just nailed the anchor rage. But, you know, uh, you guys let me know, all of you Lance mains out there, because I do feel that this move could use a little bit of love. Because here's the thing, I love this move. But every single time that I've used it in a monster, well, not every single time, but a lot of times that I've used it in monsters, I just got caught by the following hit, and it just sent me flying, and I was like, oh, well. And then it wastes all of the time that you get of the additional damage. This damage, by the way, is variable. So the stronger the hit that the monster does on you, the, the stronger the damage will be uh, that you will counter him with. So, really satisfying move to pull off, even though it can get a little bit chaotic for someone who is new to the weapon, because it's like, so let me get this straight. I have a parry on ZR plus A, and then I have another parry on ZL plus A, and, you know, sometimes you can... Okay, I got, I got a parry real fast, and you try to go for the ZL plus A, and maybe you don't have a wire bug or something. So, yeah, but overall, I really like this skill. I think it's a lot of fun. I just wish it had a little bit hyper armor. Uh, to go with it. So now let's talk about another one. And I'm going to be swapping the dash attack for a shield charge. Now, you guys know me. I'm all about the shield. Shields up iron breakers. And shield charge is something that I really appreciate. Unfortunately, it replaces the choo-choo train attack that we were talking about earlier. The uh, regular guard that Not guard dash. The regular dash attack. So now when you press ZR and X plus A, you're going to start going like this but then it stops the other problem with this this particular skill is that it consumes too much stamina 
in my opinion, considering that it stops automatically after a very short run, whereas, you know, uh, the regular dash attack, you can run, like, forever. Um, the guard dash stops very fast and consumes a tremendous amount of stamina. So there's a good aspect to this and a bad aspect to this. And the good aspect is, obviously, you're blocking. So, you know, even if you get hit, doesn't matter. Whereas with the other dash, if you get hit, then you're going to get sent flying. Uh, the other good point of this is that you can do KO damage. So... You can basically go up against the monster with this, and it also works for aerial. So, for instance, if you were to jump and press ZR, you're doing shield bashes in the air. And this also works with twin vines. So if you guys go ahead and put the twin vine in the monster's face, and then you do the B attack and press ZR, you're going to do shield bash attacks onto the monster mid-air which is a lot of stunning damage. Then you can follow this up by pressing uh, X for another shield bash, which is a significant amount of damage. As you guys can see, we can KO monsters with this. It's very satisfying for me that I love shield bashes, but you can also follow this up with a poke by pressing A. So it goes R, X, and then A. One poke, the leaping thrust. It's not particularly impressive. You can do more with the uh, dash attack pokes. If you get the, um, you know, that uh, second level of speed, you can definitely do more with that. But again, the difference is that this one advances while you're blocking. So, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages there. It all depends on what you prefer or a lot of times what monster are you facing against. And is it a monster that you can easily stun? then you might want to use guard dash, or if you feel that you're constantly being interrupted by a monster when you're using your dash attack, then your, your shield charge, am I calling it guard dash, it's shield charge, whatever. This particular charge right here is going to make quite a bit of difference. So, you know, keep that move in mind. I think that this is a really good move. And I'm actually using this one as my default right now, but I still think that dash attack if you're just starting out with a weapon might be a better option for you but yeah that's your switch skill now the next switch skill is we're gonna swap anchor rage for spiral thrust which is another silk mind attack and i'm actually going to increase our um wire bug gauges here the three uh sometimes people ask me rurikan you know that you can have infinite wire bugs in the training room, right? Yes, but I want people to see the recovery time of the Silk Mind abilities so that you get an idea of how long of a, of a downtime you're gonna have on your, on your bugs whenever you use an ability, which doesn't show if you have infinite wire bugs. But anyway, um, this particular attack, what it does is it's going to launch you forwards in a, in a straight line. So if I press ZL and A, and it's going to launch you twice if you keep holding a direction. And you can launch in any direction that you want. So for instance, I can go past, uh, past his head and then immediately back. A very important thing about this is that you need to, after you start the attack, you need to immediately input the next direction that you want to make immediately after the attack like don't wait until you're past the head to press back because otherwise you're gonna get something like this okay i still was able to nail it but there's there's a timing to it that you really got to pay attention okay now i'm just nailing it because i've been getting used to it but yeah just be aware that this thing goes down fast and you want to be instantly hitting the next direction of the follow-up attack so, but you guys are like, but that attack doesn't seem that impressive. You know, Spiral Thrust, sure, gives you a little bit more mobility with your Lance, but you know, what's so special? Why, why wouldn't you use Anchor Rage instead? And the reason is because you can use this as a guard point, and then it will increase the damage that you do. Notice how our Lance has the... Um, the blue glow, you also get a little bit of a, of a damage buff shortly after you perform the move with a counter. So, you know, like I told you, Lance is all about counters, and the Spiral Thrust is another one of those. And this deals considerably more damage. Now, due to the fact that 
Anchor Rage doesn't really have like any hyper armor to it or anything like that. I've started defaulting to the Spiral Thrust, despite the fact that as someone who's played the Lance before, I like the Anchor Rage more on account of the fact that, you know, you stay still and you keep attacking in that spot and you keep the precision of the Lance. The problem is you don't have that hyper armor, so you're going to get punished immediately after if there's a follow-up attack, whereas with the Spiral Thrust, you're able to get out of the way of the attacks and counter it and, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving when it comes to you getting punished by a follow-up attack of the monster. Not to mention it gives you some mobility, so I tend to go with the Spiral Thrust. But sometimes I'll still swap the Anchor Rage, particularly if I know that it's a monster that I can kind of... That I know well enough that I'm not going to get hit by a follow-up attack. Now, an important thing about the counter for the Spiral Thrust is that unlike Anchor Rage, this counter is affected by the level of your guard. So Anchor Rage, even if you have zero guard, it doesn't matter. It's going to block. It's going to be fine. However, this one, if you do not have enough guard to, to block the attack, it is going to send you back reeling, and it is not going to allow you to do the dash portion of the attack. Okay? So, keep that in mind. And we're going to keep the stomp going, because I'm going to swap over to the uh, final switch skill, which is insta-block. So you replace your regular guard with insta-block. What does InstaBlock do? Well, for anyone that has played uh, GU, you'll instantly recognize this animation. This is Adept Guard from GU. However, I gotta tell you guys, I think that this particular uh, switch skill is way too punishing for way too little reward. The timing is extremely tight. So let me see if I can actually land it here. There we go. That was a hit. So. Notice how tight it is because this is an attack that I'm very familiar with countering because, you know, this is the training dummy. And it still took me quite a while to get the damn thing down to actually get a proper counter. So, yes, the window is extremely tight in order to be able to get that insta block off. And the payoff is terrible because you get a cross sweep as a payoff, which is a follow up to this insta block attack. And. You know, even after you, even after you nail that cross sweep, like, look, it's 5181. Like, what, what is that? An incredible amount of effort to land this insta block counter for a very little amount of reward. So, what's the advantage to this? The main advantage of insta block is that it doesn't care about the amount of block that you have. So, even if you have zero guard, you'll still be able. To, to block that perfectly and not get sent reeling. Jesus Christ. But the timing is so incredibly tight. And the animation commitment of the cross sweep is tremendous. So, like, you're just stuck in that animation for a good amount of time that I just don't see myself recommending this particular thing uh, at all in its current state. It's too much effort to land a perfect counter to then, you know, get two attacks in that are not even that powerful. I mean, a wide sweep will out damage that and it's a lot easier to perform and you don't have to be sitting there wondering whether or not I'm going to land the, the thing this time or if I'm going to get killed, you know? So, I get it. It's that whole parry thing and you feel good. You're like, man, no, I want to feel good. I want to do the parry. And then you don't need guard at all. So I can see people that maybe like doing evade lancing. This might be something that is very appealing to them. So instead of having guard, you just stack evade extender and you stack um, evade window and stuff like that. And you just evade through everything. And then whenever you do have to block, you just do a perfect block and you still don't get sent reeling. Like I get it. But I think it is way too punishing for the reward that it gives, which is, you know, I, I have a couple of um, I have a couple of issues with the Lance here um, right now, which up until this point, like most of the weapons that, I, that I've done guides for pretty much all of the weapons that I've done guides for. So like the gun lance, the sword and shield, charge blade, those feel great. And the Lance also feels great to play, but I feel like they could do better with this weapon. Like I feel like there's a lot more that they could have given to the weapon in terms of tools that would make it 
significantly better than what it is right now. But having said that, I'm not a lance expert. I'm just showing you guys the different moves, and I'll tell you guys, uh, you know, a couple of combos and whatnot after this. But I am very curious for all of you lance mains out there. If you happen to come across this video, let me know how do you feel about the lance in Monster Hunter Rise. But anyways, uh, when it comes to combos with the Lance, there's not that much to, to really go over. Most of the, the things that you need to know about the Lance, I've already told you, which is about the mobility of it. So it's about the guard dash that you can kind of just like approach the mob like so, guard dash into a poke, then go triple poke, and then go counter, poke, 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 counter, poke, 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 counter. If you have enough of an opening, poke, poke, sweep, Counter, sweep, counter, sweep. So it's like, it's all about what is the opening that you have? Do you have enough time to do a proper sweep? What is the deal? Can you counter? The default switch skills that I tend to use is I use the shield charge, which like I said, I'm not sure I would recommend for someone who is new to the weapon to use shield charge because it's a lot harder to use than the the dash attack so i'd recommend you guys maybe use dash attack if you're just starting out but if you're not starting out i mean i'm sure you can tell what's the really cool thing about you know walking around with the shield and also be aware that you can use this as a, a reset for your combos as well so you can go poke 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 shield charge poke 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 shield charge you know so there's a lot of room to do some crazy stuff with the Lance. It's just not the flashiest weapon, which is why I know that a lot of people are like, no, I want to see this thing happen or that thing happen or set up for my big boom attack or whatever. And I say this as a gun Lance main, but I can tell you right now, the Lance is a very rewarding weapon. And I do hope that they do something about giving some hyper armor to Anchor Rage or something or uh, making insta block maybe a little bit more forgiving in terms of its timing. I don't think that there is a skill that increases the timing window for that because that would be a very, very niche skill. So yeah, I don't know. In terms of skills that I would recommend, I mean, right now in my set, which people always ask me about the set. I mean, this is the set that I'm running right now. Um, and I'm going for... Uh, I mean, ignore the defense boost. It's just because I have a lot of tier one slots that I don't know what to do with. But I'm going for maximum guard, offensive guard, evade extender, a little bit of razor sharp, uh, and flinch free. Flinch free, by the way, if you're playing multiplayer lands, the weapon is literally unplayable without flinch free. This is not a joke. Literally unplayable without flinch free. Which is a little bit ridiculous in my opinion, but yeah. But pretty much the lands can benefit from... Just about anything that can benefit from damage and anything that can benefit from defense. Now, personally, I like playing Guard Lance, which is why we got Guard 5. I think in most situations, you can get away with Guard 3. You don't really need Guard 5, but, you know, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide what's the level of Guard that you want to have on the weapon. Um, if you are playing Elemental Lance, which I recommend, by the way, I would recommend you not just focusing on raw damage like I'm doing here, like I'm playing, I'm crafting lazy for the lance, I would recommend you actually doing uh, elemental, because elemental I think is going to benefit you a lot, but don't ignore raw either, because now you have this wide sweep that is probably going to be benefiting a lot from raw damage, so yeah, experiment with it, um, and see where you land, but you know, now you know the move set, play around with it, I think it's a really fun weapon, but I do think that this iteration, I don't know, it might just not be for me or something because I kept um, I kept feeling that there's just some stuff that, that feels a little bit weird, particularly after the change that they had already done in World where we had the hyper armor on the, on the counter and then not having that on Anchor Rage just felt very weird. And then there's the Twin Vines thing, which has incredibly limited reach and just lets you jump into the monster. Like, it's fun and all, but yeah, I don't know. Either way, I'm sorry. I'm This this particular guide was a little bit different from the usual ones because I have a couple of complaints with the weapon, but let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong, stay safe, peace out.